Hey guys, today we are going to look at a very mysterious structure in a small town called Adalaj. In the middle of the roads, houses and trees, what is that strange lingam-shaped structure? Is this a secret government organization or an underground bunker? No. This is a historic structure known as Adalaj Nivav, almost perfectly aligned along the north-south axis. Its design is totally unique. It does not have an entrance on the north side at all, and no entryways in the center of the structure as well. But on this side, it has three entrances with steps in three directions, right next to one another. Why was such a unique architecture built many centuries ago? What are these three octagonal structures on top? Now, let's get on the ground and try to get a closer view. This is a very surprising structure because nothing is visible from the ground level. Usually, I show you structures starting from ground level and going up. In this one, we start from the ground level and we are going to go down. Yes, this is an underground structure, but you know how many levels, how many floors go underground? It goes five stories below. It has five different levels. What do experts say about the structure? Experts call this the Adalaj Stepwell. And it was designed with two separate wells to provide water to the public. A giant structure with so many levels and carvings just to provide water. But there's an even more weird claim. Wikipedia calls this an Indo-Islamic structure, meaning that the structure was built by both Hindus and Muslims. How is this possible? We have come more than 75 feet deep and we have reached the bottommost level of the structure and you can see this circular well. It looks remarkably simple, seems to be about 12 feet in diameter and just 30 feet deep. There are steps radiating on all four sides to help people access water from all sides. Is this well really the primary purpose of building this vast five-storied underground structure? As you can see, there seems to be nothing else here. So let's go back up and look at the other details. No, wait, what about the second well? I told you there are two wells here, right? Where is a second well? Let's go past this first well and see if we can find it. After we go past the first well, there is another structure. And you can see a narrow entrance here. It is just two feet wide. It is so narrow that only one person can go through. And here we can see the secret second well. It is smaller than the first well, and it's also less deep. If you look carefully into the well, you can see the bottom. It is probably less than 15 feet deep. Why would anyone build two separate wells right next to one another? I mean, they're for the same purpose, to draw water, right? Today, Imagine you're building a house. Would you dig two separate wells or put two bore wells right next to each other? This would be like putting two separate entrances in front of your house. Nobody does it because there should be no use for this. But the original builders must have had a valid purpose for this and we cannot understand what it is. Why is this well hidden from public view? And see here, a very fascinating carving. 
two kissing fish. What do they mean? I have repeatedly shown you carvings like this. They indicate the presence of groundwater underneath, and here we see it directly in the walls of the well. And look at the walls. You can see the shallow rectangular chambers, three chambers specifically. Inside these chambers, you can find carvings of Hindu gods, and each chamber would be visible from one floor. Why did they put these carvings and chambers in this wall? What is the real reason for building such a fantastic five storied structure? As we come out of the second well, you see this area between these two wells, it is completely covered. Look carefully, do you see anything strange? Now, from this side of the first well, look at the architecture carefully. There are no dome shaped arches. This looks like a typical Hindu architecture. They put large pillars on the sides and had very wide rectangular passages. And notice the pillars. The pillars are not made of bricks. They're not plastered. They're made of giant sandstone blocks. But now, let's go to the opposite side of the same well and look at the other side. This is shocking because it is a completely different architecture. These are Islamic doorways with those typical curves and arches. They're not made of giant stone blocks. They're all made of bricks and they're covered with plaster. This is a typical Muslim construction that you see in a mosque. So on one side, you see a Hindu architecture and on the other side, we see a Muslim architecture. Who really built the structure? Hindus or Muslims? To understand this, let's explore this place and try to analyze some of its carvings. On top, you can see the classic Islamic style. There are symmetric minars. There's this large minar on the left side. On the other side, there's an identical large minar. Right next to it, you can see this tower. And again, you can see an identical minar on the other side as well. And you can see uh, this third minar on both sides. This kind of symmetric alignment of minars is found in mosques, not only in India, but also around the world. So it is clearly a Muslim style of carving. But right below this, you can see that this gets even more confusing. You can see these elephants and you can also see horses. You can see other animals like Yali, very typical of Hindu carvings. And what's even more interesting, you can also see carvings of human beings. Muslims are not allowed to carve humans or animals because they do not want idol worship. These animals, especially the Yali, is very typical of Hindu structures. And you can see this Yali carved in many places in the structure. And you can also see the bells hanging at the end of chains in many places all over the structure. Bells are also forbidden in Islam. So who built it, Hindus or Muslims? Hindus started the construction, and almost near the end of the construction, Muslims took over the structure. And Muslims finished the rest of the structure. This is why archaeologists call it an Indo-Islamic structure. But how did they both cooperate and complete this ancient structure? Because in my channel, I've shown you several ancient Hindu temples that have been destroyed by Muslims, right? Because the Adalaj Stepwell is not a true ancient structure. Now, normally, I don't show you any structure that's not ancient. I show you structures that are built 800 years ago or older. 
but the adult step wall is only 525 years old. In India, this falls into a timeline called medieval history, not ancient history. Why did Hindus and Muslims combine together and create the structure? Because times are slowly changing at this point. In the ancient timeline, Muslims were foreign invaders who came from a different country. They could easily dehumanize the Hindus as inhuman or infidels because they had never seen this culture. But in the medieval times, Muslim rulers were born here and they grew up watching Hindus side by side. So they were not foreigners and they somewhat adapted to the Hindu culture and Hindus also adjusted with them. But who started the construction? What did they originally worship? Locals say the construction was started by a queen by the name of Ruda Devi, and she worshipped a deity called Bageshwari, who is carved on that floor. Let's go take a look at this deity. Today, Goddess Bageshwari is worshipped as an idol in many Indian states. But how was she depicted 500 years ago? As we reach this area, we are surprised. We see a massive lion-like animal. It looks brilliant and it is shown with one limb up in the air. If you look at its face, you're not reminded of a lion. It looks more like the extinct saber-toothed tiger. It is adorned with a bell on its neck. But do you see this trident in the background? It is a very interesting depiction. It's not clear if the trident is simply placed in the background or if the trident has pierced the lion. But there is another stunning detail. There are two eyes carved between the prongs of the trident, creating a face-like appearance. This is an amazing carving with so many mystical hidden details. Look at the small metal trident here. You can see the fresh flowers right next to it. This means they're still worshipping this carving every day, a ritual that's ongoing for many centuries. But where is Goddess Bageshwari? Look at this area. This part has been deliberately destroyed. Let me try to recreate this with Photoshop. You can clearly see that she is standing and petting the lion's face with one hand. This could be the goddess Bageshwari, shown as a powerful deity and carved petting a massive lion. Or maybe the face that's uh, created inside the trident represents her. Both these depictions are quite different from today's idols of this goddess. But look at this figure. What is this? Is it a dinosaur? A large, stout body, thick legs, and a very long neck? Or are we having a distorted view of the carving because it is destroyed? At the bottom, you can see these elephants on both sides. Let me show you a close-up of one pair, and let's see what we can find. You see this large bell-like object in the center, and if you look carefully, you can also see the small bells attached to them. But you see these weird things here. Look at these patterns. Why are they carved on these elephants? What is the meaning of these patterns? Close by, there is another carving. It looks similar to the previous carving, but instead of the trident. See what's there? Yeah, that same pattern. This is a type of knot. Why is it carved in this important place? Why are they performing rituals on it even today? 
What is its meaning? You can see the bells with chains on both sides and also on the animal's neck. But there is something very strange about this animal. At least, that one looked like an extinct lion-like species. This one looks totally different. It has a very different face. It has a curved snout. And look at those bulgy eyes. Is this one of the horns? It seems to be curved like the horns of a ram. However, it does have a mane like that of a lion. And you can also see that its body and legs are similar to a lion. What animal is this? Is this some type of a prehistoric extinct animal? Again, at the exact same area, you can see something has been deliberately demolished. What is it? Is it the ancient Hindu goddess Bhageshwari? But there's yet another strange figure here. Look carefully, is this a dinosaur? We know of these large plant-eating dinosaurs like sauropods. Did the original builders carve dinosaurs? If this is not a dinosaur, what other animal could this be? It has four legs, so it is definitely not a bird. What animal looks like this? This site is full of many strange unexplained carvings hiding in deep, dark areas. This is where the secret information lies. Here, you can see something that looks just like meaningless flower patterns. But look carefully, you can see an insane amount of knots. In the outer circle, you can see eight knots. And in the inner circle, you can see four knots. What is the meaning of this carving? All over the structure, you can see the same knot carved in the most obscure places. Why? It is normal to see carvings of various deities in Hindu structures and floral designs in Islamic structures. But in the structure, you see some very strange mystical patterns. Look at this one. A very odd carving with a lot of details. Inside is a flower with some petals and surrounding that we can see gear-like teeth. And then you can see the radiating patterns on all directions. And you can see three chains connecting a jar at the bottom. There are four bells carved around it. Very interesting carving. But what does it mean? You can see the floral work commonly known as Jali in India. You can find similar carvings in many mosques and Muslim structures. And this is intricate stonework because this entire panel is carved out of a single stone. This needs a lot of work. You can insert your finger inside and it comes out the back. So imagine the amount of work needed to create these carvings. Some claim these are mystical Sufi symbols. And look at this one. I know this one looks the same as the previous one I showed you, but this one has two chakras at the top and bottom, and the previous one did not. Some call this an Islamic mystical symbol. But local Hindus claim that this is Kalpa Vriksha or a divine tree. I hope you like this video because I've never shown you an Indo-Islamic structure. You can see the change in the mindset where Hindus and Muslims are adjusting to each other. And you see these two stoneworks side by side. While the Islamic invaders who came a thousand years ago would have completely demolished these carvings. The Muslims in medieval times adjusted to it and even completed the structure. While ancient Hindus would have completely abandoned the structure, 
if Muslims took over a place, medieval Hindus continued to visit this place and use it and even performed rituals or puja, which continues to this day. I am Praveen Mohan. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.